morning and welcome to online worship with us at Evangelical Lutheran Church. Today is the sixth Sunday of Easter, May 22nd, 2022. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. the gospel. Send us out in the power of the same spirit to witness to your redeeming love and draw all people to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. May God be merciful to us and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let your way be known upon earth your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For the judge the, judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations on earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth in its increase. God, our own God, 
has blessed us. May God give us blessings and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. The lesson for today is Revelation 21, verse 10 and 22 through 22.5. And in the spirit, one of the angels carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the king of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations, but nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life and its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit fruit each month and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations nothing accursed will be found there anymore but the throne of God and the lamb will be in it and his servants will worship him they will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads and there will be no more night they need no light or of lamp or sun for the Lord God will be their light and they will reign forever and ever the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Paul and Silas down to jail. Got no money to go to the bill. Keep your eyes on the prize. Hold on. Judge it shook and the chain come off. Keep your eyes on the prize. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Keep your eyes on the prize. Hold on. The only chain that we can stand is the chain of hand in hand. Keep your eyes on the prize, hold on. Got my hand on the gospel plow, won't take nothing for my journey now. Keep your eyes on the prize, hold on. John beginning in chapter 14. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus answered Judas, not Iscariot, those who love me will keep my word, 
and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. So do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. The original title of the book we call Revelation is Apocalypse. The Apocalypse of John, who wrote it while exiled on a small Greek island called Patmos. Despite using similar forms like the experience of a vision, John of Patmos has a different purpose than prophets who wrote before him. And it's a distinction that matters. Here's why. Both John and prophets like Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, took critical aim at circumstances on earth. International alliances, treatment of the poor, corrupted faith. Prophets warned or threatened coming disaster, the kind of upheavals that would sweep over God's people to right the wrongs in history. At some point, however, conditions in time become so degraded that hope for a fix here on earth by human actors is impossible to contemplate. Any redemption seems to call for a complete meltdown, a total slash and burn, to clear the debris for a totally new world. And so the pages of John's apocalypse are animated by clashing armies, colored horses, mysterious symbols, fantastic beasts, all a supernatural, not natural, not historical, but a supernatural vision, not constrained by the world as we know it. And God will bring that new world to earth, leaving John to spend his vigorous imaginative energy on God's new Jerusalem. This new city brought down to earth by God from heaven is not a reprise of the Garden of Eden, although there are clearly some parallels, like trees. In Eden, two trees are mentioned, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge. Two trees, two different purposes. A taste of the fruit we know best from the tree that's going down in history in infamy. The taste of that fruit gave the first couple a knowledge of good and evil. But it seems that the threat level for eating from the other tree was higher, so high that God drove the first couple east of Eden so that they could not eat from the fruit of the tree of life, and from that fruit live forever. Both temptations have kept us focused on the fruit. Always an apple, 
although the Bible never names it that way. But John's vision also concerns the leaves. The leaves of the tree of life are for the healing of the nations. Even if the author has something mythical and imaginative in mind, we know there's a basis for the healing properties of plants used then and now. Rub the leaves of a bay tree and pick up a scented geranium and take a deep whiff or even rub lavender between your fingers. You or I may not have the botanical wisdom of earlier peoples to match plant and ailment, but we know about new drugs derived from rare plants in the Amazon rainforest. We also know that the phrase, the healing of the nations, isn't about pharmacy. John here uses the Greek word for healing, therapeia, the service given to one by another. Think counselor, think spiritual director, think compassionate friend. Think also coast guards pulling drowning refugees out of a stormy sea or hard-hatted rescuers, just your neighbors and your friends running with bodies on stretchers to hospitals in ruins where doctors without borders operate while the world comes to an end. There is a lot to heal. And okay, Nearly every human generation has seen its own circumstances as likely the end of times. John's apocalypse was no different in that way than my grandmother's expression, the world is going to hell in a handbasket. And when you stop reading the news because of the dark weight that sinks into your spirit, Maybe, strangely, there is a little wedge of light coming from the possibility of an apocalypse. It might let us start all over again fresh and make a new beginning. Then bring it on. Let's let this one go. This is the impulse that helps us to recognize Revelation as part of the New Testament. This little wedge of light coming from the possibility that there could be a new start. A testament to the good news of God. There will be a new beginning. The one that God makes. And it will not be a slash and burn, jump ship, cut and run affair. There will be continuity with things precious to us. And the new creation will be recognizable from the things of the earth that still star in John's apocalypse. We'll know it when we cup our hands in running water and think about the river of life that flows broadly through the boulevards of the heavenly city. When we rub the leaves of a bay tree or scented geranium or juniper berry and think of the healing of the nations. When we hold a precious stone, a pearl, made by a Chesapeake oyster over a grain of sand. And here's the biggest revelation. The new earth doesn't begin in a garden, but it begins as a city. No less than Jerusalem, get out. Name a place on this earth most identified with conflict, terror, and religious fighting. Jerusalem, as the start point of a redeemed creation, is as counterintuitive as our redemption starting 
from God's Son hanging on a cross. And it has a word to speak regarding that impulse to cut and run from the tragedy that we have made of earth and humankind. God's not having any of that. True to nature, when the only rational choice is to start fresh elsewhere, God starts fresh in the most ruined places. Amen. to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. God of new life, open your church to the unexpected ways your spirit is at work. Guide bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders in their visioning, partnership, and planning. Surround us with your peace. God in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give a vision of increase and abundant harvest for farmers, laborers, and gardeners who are beginning their growing season. Join their efforts with the goodness of creation to feed all living things. God in your mercy, hear our prayer. Shine your light of wisdom and peace among nations. When those in power seek to assert dominance over others, confound their ways and make them yield to your humble authority. God in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give safe haven to those who seek healing, liberation, or peace. Create places filled with hospitality where hurting people find your loving presence and wholeness. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uphold the work of ministries and organizations in our communities who assist people experiencing homelessness, citizens returning from prison, and all marginalized people. Accomplish your will through their efforts. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Assemble your people at rivers, streams, and fonts, where we remember our baptism and welcome others into the communion of saints. Gather us with those who have died when we meet together at your river of life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us pray in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of your grace and for the hope of glory. And. We pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but also in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through your Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord, our God. You reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliverance. on eagles Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord We will wait upon the Lord We will wait upon the Lord Strength will rise as we wait upon And now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in everything good, working in you that which is well-pleasing in God's sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory and honor forever. Amen. 